But right now, I'll be going to the book of Psalm 23. The 23rd Psalm. Praise God. That's a guy. Thank you, Lord. All, all of the Psalms. Yes. At first, I'll be reading from the King James Version. Yes. And then I'll be reading from the Message Bible, which brings more clarity. Yes. Amen. You have to say amen. 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 I'll be reading from King James first, then the yes. message Bible. This is from King James. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the soul waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy sash, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. This will be from the message Bible. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me in the quiet pools to drink from. True to your word. You let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through the death valley, I am not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner in front, right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Mm -hmm. Your beauty and love chase me after me every day in my life. I'll be back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Praise God. Father, in Jesus' name, we glorify you, we praise you, we honor you, we adore you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that you open up the ears of your listener. Lord. Yes. yes. You open up the hearts yes, to God. other people to receive, yes, Lord. God. Hallelujah. Yes. You open up eyes so that they'll see what you're going to do, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, as we get into work, Lord, I ask you to hide me behind the cross so that people will see more of you instead of me, Lord. Yes, Father God, anoint my tongue, Lord. Yes, anoint, my, anoint my tongue, Lord, so that it'll be easy for me to preach and teach your word, Lord. And Father God, we pray that every listener will not only keep, just hear your word, but apply it to our lives, Lord. We pray that your word that go forth yes, will never come back to you, Lord. But we thank you that, thank you, God. We'll, but we thank you, God, for it. Thank you that your, your word will come back We'll, we'll do what it was sent to accomplish. And we give you praise, glory, and honor forever. And the church say amen. 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 Praise God. The title of the message is, Our Daddy Has Our Back. Amen. Yeah. All right. Praise, praise the Lord. King, Psalm, King David, who was the psalmist, because he details that God takes care of and protects us. Mm -hmm. David himself related to God because he took care of of the sheep. If you read in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verses 10 to 11, it details how David was a shepherd who took care of the sheep. What is a shepherd? The term shepherd is defined in the Webster's Dictionary as a person who tends a sheep. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew word for shepherd is roe, which means the one who has the best interest for the sheep. Amen. That's why God is described as Adonai roe, which means that he is a shepherd and rock of Israel, according to Genesis chapter 49, verse 24. The Greek word for shepherd is poimen, which means the one who takes care of the flock, which is also um, a term for pastor. Amen. In the biblical term, the shepherd means the guy who takes care of his followers. We must understand that we as members of the body of Christ are the sheep. Mm -hmm. Amen. While God... While Christ Jesus is the chief shepherd, according to 1 Peter 5.4, the pastor of the local church is the under-shepherd, while the congregation members are the sheep. Amen. The psalm helps us to recognize who God is and what God does. If you read Psalms 23, you can be full of joy and excitement because you can think about God's goodness and faithfulness. The purpose of Psalm, chapter 20, psalm 23 I didn't mean to say chapter. Mm -hmm. The purpose of Psalm 23 mm -hmm. is to help us to trust God to take care of us mm -hmm. 
take care of what we are in need of. Mm -hmm. Throughout Psalm 23, we will understand four, four roles of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. We must understand that Psalm 23 shows us that number one, God's our lover. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 1 tells us that God loves us with everlasting love. Yes. That means that God loves us continually even though we have done wrong and fallen short. God loves us before we didn't know Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. why, according to John 3, 16, he loved us so much that he get, sent his only begotten son yes. that whosoever believes will not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. That's why Psalm 23, 6 tells us that goodness and mercy follows all the days of our lives. What does good and mercy have to do with love? Goodness and mercy are related to love because God has been so good to us and we have not been good to ourselves. Amen. It's important to understand why we are still here even if we have done things that are not pleasing to God. The reason why we are still here is because of the grace and mercy of God. Grace God. means favor, means that you get the good things that you didn't deserve. But mercy means that God will hold the punishment from you that you deserve for the wrongs that you did. And thank God that he did not give up on us. Amen. Because God didn't give up on us, we must understand that we don't need to walk under condemnation. That's why Romans 8, 1 tells us that there is no condemnation Amen. to you because you're in Christ Jesus. Yes. All you have to do is forgive yourself and be thankful that God is a forgiving and merciful, merciful God. Yes. It's, and this to God being our lover, he's also our disciplinary. Yes. There's a difference between punishment and discipline. Punishment is about getting the payment for the wrongs that were done. Which lets us know that if, if we're not, if we don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and because of this, since we commit, we would, all, if we don't know Jesus Christ, and because of our sins that we commit, we land up with the punishment. But when we're in Christ Jesus, and when we fell short, we receive discipline from God, which means that God corrects us and try to help help us go into the right path. Mm -hmm. Yes. And God corrects us, God convicts us with righteous with his righteousness. Yeah. And then another word for discipline is correction or conviction. And the reason why God convicts us when we went wrong well is because he loves us. And he's not right. mad at us. We must understand that God is for us. Yes. Yeah. Hebrews chapter twelve yes. verse six yeah. reminds us that God disciplines those whom he loves. We must understand that God does not condemn us, but he corrects us. We've got to draw the line. Yeah, it's true. The purpose of God correcting us is to show where we're going wrong. It's just like a parent would spank a child out of correction and love for wrongdoing. Because a, child, a parent doesn't want the child to, to suffer the consequences for the wrongs that they do. God convinces us when we step outside the world because he loves us so much. When it comes to God convincing us, it's not just the sins that were categorized as big sins such as drunkenness and fornication and adultery, but also the sins that we all were considered as little sins such as backbiting and not showing love to people, not sharing the gospel and so on. Because God saved us, God wants for us to grow in grace and renew our minds with the word of God so that we can be like Christ Jesus. Yes. And the second thing that Psalm 23 shows us that God is our provider. Yes. When you look at Psalm chapter Psalm 23, 1, it tells us that we don't have to be in Latin because we have God who takes care of us. Just like the shepherd feeding his sheep, God gives us what we need. Philippians 4, 19 tells us that God will supply our needs according to his riches and glory. In order to allow God to take care of what we need and what we must do is put our faith in God and, and seek Him first. And in order to release your faith in God, it's important to ask God what you need. Claim that you have what God will do for you. Pay your tithes so that you can release the blessings and sow seed into the ministries and thank Him in advance for what He'll do for you. 
we understand that God provides for us, when we understand that God provides for us, we don't have to worry about the bad news concerning the economy and job losses. You don't have to worry about recession and inflation and all that stuff because you serve a guy who owns a cow on a thousand hills. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And we must learn that God owns everything. And everything that God has in his fridge is for us. And we as Christians don't have to go according to what go according to the world's economy because but we go according to what according to God's economy because God owns a cow on a thousand hills. Psalms twenty four one tells us that the earth is the Lord's in the fullness of thereof. And when you in a tight situation where where you need need money for the bills or need money for clothes or or to take care of the <coughs> lights of the church when you ask God to to make a way for you and, and someone came out of nowhere and gave you a give you a check that will cover what you need. And people will ask you, how were you able to get that? But you gotta tell them it's God's doing, because you cannot take credit for what God's already done. Yes. Exactly. The reason why you cannot take credit for what God's already done because God owns everything. Yes. That's why God wants for us to seek Him first in His righteousness, so that you can you can allow Him to take care of what we need. And the third thing that Psalm 23 shows us is that God's our protector. First John. Chapter 4, verse 4 tells us that greater is he that dwells within us than he who dwells within the world. Yes. We all have been in situations when people conspire against us and plot our downfalls. And there will be times where the devil would use people, especially the ones in the church, to attack us. But because we have God as our protector, we don't have to walk in fear. Yes, you may feel fear, but because you're a child of God, you don't have to let fear rule over you. Second Timothy 1, 7 tells us that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. Yes, yes. That's why God wants for us to walk in boldness and power when it comes to standing up for him and his work. Because you're under the protection of God, it'll be easy for us to take a bold stand for Jesus, the word of God, and righteousness. Yeah. God promised in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 7, that no weapon that's formed against us will prosper. That means God can stop every conspiracy, lying tongue, and negative words from destroying you. And the fourth thing that Psalm 23 shows us that God's our comforter. Psalm 23 verse 2 tells us that God makes us down, lie down in green pastures and lead us beside still quiet, quiet waters. That means God gives us peace in the midst of the storms that we go through, yeah. or it be Amen. sickness, or kids yeah. getting on your nerves, and yeah. folks scandalizing your name, or money acting funny, or no food in the refrigerator, or someone <laughs> eating up your food and breathing up yes. all your good air. But God, <laughs> he gives you peace in, in the midst of the storms. Yeah. That's why, yeah. according to John chapter 10, verse 10, that Jesus came so that we will have life and have more abundance, meaning that we have joy and peace. In the midst of trials that we go through, that's why Isaiah 26, 3 tells us that he gives us him, he gives us perfect peace if we keep our minds on us. Because yes. God gives us peace. We don't have to wait until things go well in order to have peace. God did not make trials and tribulations to go away, but he gives us peace so that we can yes. overcome them. Mm -hmm. And you know, we'll close with the statement that when you understand Psalm 23, it will cause you to walk in faith and to overcome work because God has his best interest in our heart. It's best for us to follow the shepherd and, and put our faith in him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you.